Hello and welcome to Kafka tutorial at Learning Journal. In this session, we will discuss custom serializers. We already know that we need appropriate serializers for our keys and values. In all of our earlier examples, we are sending strings. Kafka provides some other serializers, for example, int, double, and long. But these serializers together with string serializer don't cover most of the use cases. If you are coming from a database background, you can think of a topic like a table and each message sent to the topic like a record. Those records are not always just a single string or a number. Normally, we have multiple columns in a record. So when working with Kafka, we need to be able to send a record of multiple columns. Similarly, if you are coming from an object-oriented programming background, you will see Kafka messages as an object. And normally, these objects will have multiple fields and methods. We should be able to send these objects to Kafka as a message. Sending simple strings to Kafka may fulfill some requirements but in a complex condition, you may need to send custom objects. For example, a supplier object or an invoice object. If you want to send such custom objects or a row-like structure, you need to implement a custom serializer and a deserializer. But let me tell you that there are other better options. Best practice is to use generic serializers instead of creating custom serializers and deserializers. There are many generic serializers like Avro and Protocol Buffer, but to be able to understand how serializers work, we will look at one example. However, most of the time you will be using generic serializers like Avro. We will leave Avro for some other day and focus on custom serializers in this session. Okay, to understand the idea of serializer and deserializer, we need to create an example. In this example, we will do following things. We will create a supplier. We will serialize this supplier class and send the supplier object as a message to Kafka. Then we will create a producer. This producer will send supplier object as a Kafka record. Earlier we were sending strings, but in this example, we are going to push an object instead of a simple string. Third thing is create a serializer. So we will create a serializer to convert a supplier object into a byte array. Then we will create a deserializer. So this deserializer is to convert a byte array back into a supplier object. Kafka doesn't know how to serialize and deserialize our object. And so we have to create a serializer and deserializer. Finally, we will create a consumer. So this consumer will read supplier objects from Kafka and just print the details on the console. Then we will execute our example and observe all of this working together. So let's start. The first thing is the supplier class. Let's look at the code. The supplier class defines three variables. Supplier ID, supplier name and supplier date. We have one constructor and three methods in this class. We will use this supplier class to instantiate supplier object and send it as a Kafka message. This code is very simple, right? The constructor takes three parameters and initializes the three variables. The three methods are to get the values for the corresponding variable. Next thing is a serializer class. We already know that there is a string serializer. Sometimes it is a good idea to copy the existing source code and modify it according to your requirement. So I took this code and modified it for my example. So let's look at the modified code. So the name of my class is supplier serializer and it implements serializer interface and also sets the generic type as supplier. 
This interface is defined under Kafka common package. As per this interface, we need to override three methods. Configure method, serialize method and close method. If you remember the previous session where we implemented a custom partitioner, you can recall this pattern. We had a similar interface for partitioner. So we already know that configure and close are for initialization and cleanup. And Kafka producer will call these methods once. It will call configure method when we instantiate the producer and call close method when we close the producer. But in our example, we have nothing to do with the configure and close methods. So we leave them empty. The main action is happening in the serialize method. The code is straightforward. If the data is null, we return null because we have nothing to serialize. So we just convert supplier name and supplier data into UTF-8 bytes. Then we allocate a byte buffer and encode everything into the byte buffer. Since we will need to know the length of these supplier name and supplier date strings at the time of deserialization, we also encode their sizes into the byte buffer. Finally, we return the byte buffer array. That's it, done. That's what the serializer means. Convert your object into bytes and that's what we have done here. Next part is a deserializer. Once you understand the serializer, the deserializer is simple. Let's look at the code for deserializer. We are doing the opposite of what we did in the serializer. We deserialize every field, create a new supplier object and return it. This is simple, right? That's what deserializer means. Take a byte array and convert it into an object. But the problem with this approach is managing future changes in the schema. So you implement this serializer and deserializer and your system is functional for few months. After few months, you have a requirement to add another field in the supplier object. If you modify your supplier object, you must change your serializer and deserializer. Maybe the producer and consumer as well. But the problem doesn't end there. After making new changes, you can't read your earlier messages because you changed the format and modified your code to read the new format. That's where generic serializers like Avro will be helpful. We will cover that part in some other session. For now, let's continue our discussion on this example. Okay, we completed supplier class, serializer and deserializer class. Now we need a producer to send messages and consumer to receive messages. There is nothing new about a producer. We have already created several producers earlier. The producer code in this tutorial is almost same as earlier examples. I changed the value serializer class name. I also changed the producer generics parameter. And finally, we are sending two messages using synchronous send. Okay, now we need a consumer. We can't use console consumer because we need a custom deserializer to interpret our message records. Let's look at our consumer. We are creating our first consumer in this tutorial. We haven't created a consumer earlier in this tutorial. Understanding consumers will take another set of sessions. So I'm not going to explain this consumer code in this video. That's a separate topic covered in later videos. But just to give you a glimpse, this for loop is processing each message that the consumer received from the Kafka broker. I'm only displaying all three supplier fields on the console. So it will show you all the suppliers received on the consumer side. Now let's execute the code and observe the outcome. Okay, 
So I use SBT for compiling and packaging my code. You can use whatever you prefer to use. So these are my two terminals. In the first terminal, I'll execute a subscriber and in the second terminal, I will run a producer. You can see that messages are reaching to the consumer. Okay, that's it for this session. We will cover some more details on Kafka producer in next session. So see you again. Thank you for watching. Keep learning and keep growing.